Hey folks, John here, Old Hickory Forge. Welcome back. If it's your first time here, welcome. What's going on today? I'm down here in the workshop getting moving on a pretty cool project. What I want to make is something along the lines of a Viking style cross peen hammer, like something from the Master Mirror find. It's worth mentioning I've never actually read the book. I don't own the book. I've seen a couple other smiths, uh, John Switzer, Black Bear Forge, Rowan Taylor. I've seen them basically go through and recreate it with their own artistic spin. And that's something I want to try. But the basic idea is you forge the body of the hammer out of wrought iron, and then you forge weld on a hardenable steel for the face and the peen. So to make the body, I got a piece of tie rod from a train car from 1901. I've worked with this stuff before, it's pretty gnarly. And then I got a, this piece of scrap 1045. I use two inch round for all my hammers and tools and whatnot. And whenever I get through cutting up the sizes I need, there's always a little bit left over. And I save them because there's always something you can do with them. But uh, we're gonna flatten this out into a bar stock uh, that we can use. The wrought iron, basically what I need is something along the lines of an inch and a half square stock. And like I said, this stuff's pretty gnarly. If I try to upset this, it's just not gonna hold together. So I'm going to cut it up into small pieces, flatten them out, stack them up, forge weld them into a billet and go from there and uh, we'll see what happens. Alrighty, we got our 1045 processed up. I just used a half inch kiss block, ran it through the press. So it's about half inch thick by about half an inch, yeah, inch and a half wide. So there's a good bit more there than we need. Now I need to get to work on this wrought iron. Alrighty, we got our wrought iron flattened out into some usable pieces. So uh, all I'm gonna do is give those a quick brush and flux. Wrought iron welds pretty easily, so you don't gotta take as much care as you would if you were like making Damascus or something. So we'll just give them a quick brush, give them a flux, run inside, tack them together with the welder and get that baby forge welded solid. I got my wrought iron billet tacked together. I ran my tacks on the ends because uh, when this thing is done, it's all gonna be ground clean and etched and everything. And I don't want the uh, mild steel MIG wire fouling up the etch because the faces are gonna be cleaned up before any more forge welding happens. Those will be long gone. But all that's gonna happen now, I got a little bit of flux on this baby. We're gonna heat it up, let it soak real good and uh, forge weld this into a solid block. Alrighty, so after the second weld, we're looking pretty good. It's behaving as one piece of material. I don't see anything coming apart. So now we'll turn it on its side, keeping it at a welding heat and try to work this down into a square stock. You know, this is where your welds are the most likely to delaminate when you work against the plane of the weld like this. So if it holds up, uh, we can be pretty confident. Alrighty, so I actually forgot to film the first press working from the seams but it's holding together real good. I think I'm actually gonna draw this out and cut and fold it to refine the grain a little bit because as it sits right now, it's still pretty coarse and I'm worried with punching and drifting an eye, it's really likely to crack and split. So that's what's happening now. I'm gonna just eyeball up the center. There's a good bit more here than I need, so I'm not stressing the measurements too, too much. So like I said, if you look at that break, you know, this stuff's still pretty gnarly. The good news is it looks like the forge welds have taken well. So uh, we'll just keep processing and working this thing down until we got a good piece of material. Here's what we got after the cut and fold. I spared you the pain of watching me draw it out and use a kiss block, but I've got this thing to approximately inch and a half square. I need about three and a half inches for the, uh, for the size of hammer I want to make. So we'll trim off the horrible ends. Uh, and get a nice piece to work with and go from there. As I'm sure you know, wrought iron is not a hardenable material. So in the old days, to get a functional tool, they would weld on a hardenable steel face. So for that, I'm using 1045. I'm going to cut some teeth onto it to uh, help it grab a hold of the wrought iron body. Forge weld those babies together.
give our face steel a good brush, get all the scale and crap off. off to the side to cool. So if you're unfamiliar with the process I'm using, basically when our face steel is cold, we're going to heat the iron block on up and uh, basically just press it onto there to install it, forge weld all that together and be good to go. Focus. Alrighty, so I've taken a few heats pressing from the top. It feels pretty solid. I've upset the billet a little bit. So hopefully what I can do now is uh, take a couple more welding heats, bring this thing back to inch and a half square, blend the seams in, and we'll have a good face weld. It's again worth mentioning that this is where the weld is most likely to fail. I hope that doesn't happen, but uh, let's see what see how it goes. So we got a bit of a failure here. As you can see, our face weld didn't take very well, as well as we're starting to develop some uh, some splits in our wrought iron block. Also, we've lost a lot of mass to scale, so now we're going to end up with a smaller hammer than I want. You know, I thought about just, uh, you know, tossing the whole thing in the scrap bucket, but we're not giving up just yet. I got another rod of wrought iron. We're going to draw that out, forge weld it into another block, combine it with this block, and keep rolling with this. Alrighty, we got another piece of our wrought iron cut up to make into another billet. I kind of wanted to take a second to show you how gnarly this stuff I'm working with really is. Even after being cut and folded, it's kind of hard to capture on camera. But you can see there's still slag inclusions all throughout this material. And even on this stuff that hasn't been refined yet, it's much, much worse. You know, that's part of the nature of working with this material. It's what makes it so beautiful when it's put in an acid bath. But uh, I just kind of wanted to, you to get an idea of how tough this stuff can be to work. So we'll forge weld this into a block, cut it and fold it, forge weld it to this one. Cut it and fold it again, hopefully get some of that crap out of there and uh, keep moving. Alrighty, so here's our first block. Here's our second block. We got a little bit of unpleasantness going down on there on that end because I kind of screwed up the cut and fold. But there's enough we can cut it off and then uh, we'll forge weld these two together, draw it out, probably cut and fold it one more time to hopefully get all the crap out of there and uh, we'll keep moving. You know, hopefully this turns out. Alrighty, so I spared you the pain of watching me forge weld those two blocks together and then draw it out and cut and fold it. But here's what we got. You know, material looks pretty good on the inside. That seam goes in there a little further than I would like it to. But, uh, you know, I think it'll be okay. We got about inch and a half square by about two and a half inches of material. So we lost a good bit doing all that. There's now about the same amount I started with before we did all that mess. So uh, let's go face weld round two. So this time I cheated and tacked it on with the welder. Both surfaces were ground nice and clean. This time what I think I'm going to try to do is do the forge welding by hand. Uh, I just think that might give me a better result than trying to do it up under the press. So uh, let's keep moving. We're not giving up just yet. taking a total of five welding heats on this thing it looks pretty good it feels like it took i'm going to throw this thing up under the press and try to get it you know squared up to a slightly smaller diameter if the face stays on through that we can be confident in that weld and we can keep moving with the project Well, that's a good weld if I ever did see one. It, uh, the face seems to have stayed on well. 
a little bit of a seam right there, but that's to be expected with a face weld like that. There's really not a whole lot of room. I'm surprised it blended as well as it did the rest of the way around. So now, if you remember from earlier in the video, this is where uh, we failed last time. So now we're actually making progress. So we'll punch the eye, start to draw out the peen, weld in the bit for the peen, and uh, hopefully this baby turns out. Got the eye punch, got a nice clean plug. So now what we'll do is go in here with a straight peen and start drawing out the uh, the peen of the hammer and get it ready for splitting and welding. So we got a pretty good preform for whatever it is we're trying to do. Face weld took great. It blended in real good. I don't see it coming loose at all, so that's nice. Uh, a little bit of a split in the wrought iron okay, right there, but that's okay. Uh, so next step is to split this and weld in the, uh, the tool steel for the peen. I got a cut started with an angle grinder. Just need to go in here and make it a little deeper. Uh, we'll get our bit for the peen welded in. I got this little uh, 1045 wedge here made up. We'll seat that in there when it's deep enough. And then I'll probably actually run inside, attack it together with the welder, just to keep it from moving around while we do the forge welding. Last step I took in the forgery of this thing was I put the drift in once from the top, once from the bottom, and I ran through the flat dies of the press just to get everything smoothed up a little bit, hopefully save me a little time on the grinder. So once this baby ghouls, we'll dress up the profile, get this nice and flat, dress the faces, and uh, I'll probably do a test etch before I heat treat this thing just to see what it's going to look like in case it breaks during the quench and I don't get to finish it. But uh, we're getting somewhere, boys. So here's what we got to clean this guy up. Uh, there's a bit of a non-structural split in the wrought iron right there. It doesn't go through to the inside of the eye, so I'm not worried about it. As well as the uh, the bit on this side didn't blend in very well. What I said about uh, upsetting the peen a little bit beforehand would have helped. I would have had a little more room to blend that, but I, I believe it's structurally sound. If it makes it through the quench, we'll be good. If it's going to break, it'll break there. But uh, let's test etch this guy real quick. 
I hope this thing makes the heat treat because uh, that's pretty freaking cool. All right, here we go. 1045, water quenched steel. If the forge welds are going to break, they'll break here. I didn't feel anything, so hopefully it's okay. So here is what we got. One wrought iron steel faced Viking hammer. Head came out right out of pound, so uh, you know it's on the small side, which actually it's closer in terms of historical accuracy to the hammers in the Master Mirror find, at least from the minuscule amount of research I've done. Like I said, I've never actually read the book. I've just seen other Smiths replicate this, and I thought it was cool, and I thought it'd be challenging, so I wanted to try. <laughs> and boy, was it freaking challenging, you know. If you watch the whole video, you'll see we hit quite a few roadblocks, and uh, I almost thought about scrapping the project after that first face weld didn't take. That being said, I'm really, really happy with how well this one took. You know, it's seamless all the way around. And the fact that it made it through a water quench, there's no doubt in my mind this forge weld is solid. There's a bit of a split in the wrought iron right there. It's to be expected working with the material. And it is kind of fouling up the end of the clef weld right there. But, you know, it's 99% well that it's not going to come out of there or anything like that. All in all, I'm really happy this thing turned out. You know, it was a, it was a pretty serious uphill climb. If I were to attempt something like this again, I would spend the time and money to get my hands on some thicker in-section wrought iron so I didn't have to forge weld a bunch of scrap together like I did. But like I said, all in all, I'm happy with the way this little guy came out. Got it seated on a little stubby 9-inch charred ash handle. It's a cute little guy. Uh, but anyway, this little guy is for uh, September's quarterly Patreon giveaway, so patrons of the channel, be on the lookout for that. Huge thanks to you guys. You guys are awesome. Uh, if you want to get in on that, there's still a little time for the giveaway. So check it out. Link in the description, uh, as well as links to all the social media if you want to follow me or Etsy if you want to purchase any of my work. If you want to stay up to date with the goings on day to day here at the shop, Instagram is the best place. That's where I'm the most active. But that's all I got for you. If you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Always more cool stuff coming. And uh, y'all take care.